How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the Zotec Digital Multimeter and 10 megahertz oscilloscope in one. It's priced a little bit higher than digital multimeters of this similar quality, but lower than if you bought a dedicated oscilloscope, which runs around $200 at the entry level. Why do you need 10 megahertz? Why do you need 100 megahertz? Let's say you have an Arduino like this. This runs on a 16 megahertz crystal. If it could toggle a square wave as fast as possible, at 16 megahertz, then this scope won't be able to register that. Most often times it toggles it much slower than that and you can capture it with this scope. Here's everything that comes in the box. You have the meter, some probes, you got a temperature probe and also an oscilloscope probe, USB-C cable to connect to the computer, a manual for the scope probe and a manual for the meter. It also comes with a case and the handle normally resides on the inside. You can pull it out to the front and just shove it all in there and it all fits inside. Curiously, the temperature probe is this stick type, similar to temperature probes you put in meat. To turn it on, you press and hold the on button. It's starting off in scope mode. We're gonna change it to voltmeter mode. These buttons correspond to these live buttons up here that changes based on your screen. Change it to temperature. AC millivolt and then it's temperature. It defaults in Celsius. If you short out the voltage side, it will read a internal temperature. With the probe, it initially reads 22 Celsius. So we can try to warm it up here. I'm gonna rub it. Well, it increases in temperature, all right. And the Fahrenheit appears at the corner right here. Ohm measurement, it has this old school meter style thing, but it's on an LCD. It shows 0.09 ohms and we can push the relative button to zero that out. Now it's zero, and if we let go, it's overload. Push it back together, it says 0.01. I've worked with very sharp tips and I tend to poke myself. So unless I really need the sharp tips, I prefer to have a pair of more rounded tips for everyday use. It comes with the protector sleeve, so it's a good idea to put them back on because they're very sharp. Changing it to the NYX reading type. This is continuity. It will beep if you connect something. Diode reading, capacitance reading. There's actually no inductance reading. Usually you need a specialized meter to measure inductance. There's DC voltage, there's AC voltage. If I press amp, it tells you to change it to the 10 amp plug. And suddenly this appears as milliamp, so you can change to the milliamp reading and you can measure through the milliamp plug over here. Maximum is 200 milliamps and the fuse internally will break if you exceed that. Notice the temperature option disappeared. So you actually got to go back to voltage and then the temperature will reappear over here. On the top, there is the scope input. This is a one channel scope. It comes with a 60 megahertz probe, so plenty fast for this 10 megahertz scope. There's also these plastic rings. There are different colors you can change it to, but you don't actually need that because you only have one single scope probe. You won't get confused. The side has a one kilohertz square wave and a USB port. Connect this and also the one kilohertz, the supplied screwdriver, the compensation knob, we can adjust this. It's supposed to be square, so we just turn it until it's as square as we can get it, and that's it. The scope comes with these protector pieces that you can put on. It's particularly useful if you don't wanna short out anything while doing your probing. Here's a look at the other attachment. Press auto range and it'll do everything for you real quick. Having this volt time highlighted, you can change the time scale to show more waveforms or less waveform. So we show one single one megahertz square wave right now, or as square as it can be. And the up down changes the volt scale of each division. So whatever it says up here is the scale for each little square. 0.2 volts per division. So it goes minus 0.8 volts and then positive 0.8 volts. If I change it to the one volt scale, yeah, it's around 0.8 and then to positive 0.8. So the move allows you to move the waveform left and right. You can change the trigger voltage so you can go up a little higher. If you're higher than the voltage itself, it's not gonna trigger. So that's why it's kind of moving around. So you gotta move it to within where the voltage is. And what's most important sometimes is to to have the trigger mode set to single. This will allow you to do some special triggering. So if you just push it one time, there, it captures it only one time. The probes can change from 1x measurement or 10x measurement. They're both set at 10x right now. If I switch it to 1x, it's gonna be a lot bigger. Let's say you capture something interesting, you wanna save it so you can push 
hold and save right here. It's saving a picture. So you can pull this picture out of the USB port. It appears as a flash storage and you can use that picture in a report. It has this giant lithium ion rechargeable battery. If these ever run out of capacity, you can replace them. There are two fuses over here for your current measurements. And it looks like there's another hole right here. Possibly another model down the line might have two scope channels. The square wave output over here and also the USB-C. The beeper, microchip, LCD ribbon cable. Let's take a look at the other side. These are really thick buttons actually. It makes for a very squishy pushing feel. It appears the major IC here has been sanded off so I can't really read off what the heck this is. If you suddenly find yourself with the amp meter not working such as a 10 amp one or the milliamp one, change it to the resistance and with the red probe, touch the 10 amp and you should see a very low resistance indicating that the fuse is connected. Same thing with the milliamp, 2.58. If this reads under a couple of ohms and the 10 amp one reads under one ohm, then those fuses are good. You don't have to open up the case to replace those two fuses. Overall, I think this is a very good choice for the electronic hobbyist. In terms of future proofing this, if you think you're gonna work on anything above 10 megahertz, then you probably want a dedicated oscilloscope instead of this combination thing. If you guys are interested in getting one of these for yourself, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.